ladies, gentlemen, am I often forgotten, but certainly not by me. Smelting Gauntlets, welcome to the channel, and welcome to another guide. In this guide, we're going to be looking at range at Karapak. Is it viable? Who's going to use this combat style here? What's the point in it all? We're going to be discussing that here now. So this guide is going to work for people who fall into one of two use categories. The first one is going to be the person who absolutely loves range to death and they are just going to use nothing but range as a combat style. They don't want to touch magic, they don't want to touch melee, they just want to range everything. And you know, it's a video game so we can play however we want, so it is what it is, you do what you want. And the second use case is going to be for people who have done a lot of care pack and they want to see a method that kind of changes things up a little bit. I for sure know that when I'm doing a giant grind session over you know a couple months or something like that of a certain boss to either make gp for a goal item or i just want to have the flex of having a bunch of kc at some place um changing up the methods used will greatly help you get through all of those grinds because you're not literally doing the same thing over and over again i mean you're doing the same content over and over again but you're doing it in different ways using different ability rotations and it can help change it up to keep you on your path to full send and now we're going to discuss the gear that I was using at Carapac to get ranged solo kills in hard mode. I used two different setups. Uh, one was primarily focused on a poison setup. Um, I've been using this at Solak and Glacor, a couple other places, and it is quite a fun setup to use here as well. And it works rather nicely. And the other setup was just kind of a full damage setup, uh, using, funny enough, full arrows, uh, Reckless Aura, and Ripper Demon, and just trying to send out all the damage to see what the combat style could really do. And oddly enough, with both setups, I was seeing similar kill times now. I understand I am not the world's greatest ranger by any means. There are plenty of people who are much more talented with this combat style than I am. However, I feel like I can hold my own as sort of a uh, mid to mid upper pack uh, ranger. And I was seeing anywhere from the 350s to the 410s rather consistently with both setups. The setup on screen is kind of the full out version where I'm using Ripper D Demon, so I brought four spirituals to just spam the Ripper as much as I possibly could. And the blue Pernix Quiver has full arrows in it. The other Quiver uh, next to the Super Cerebrus, that one just has uh, splintering arrows in them. I just brought them as kind of a uh, nice way to have an extra threshold on the echoes being that full arrows are going to give you a lot they give you a lot of accuracy problems on the echoes as your slayer task doesn't work uh this problem i've noted in other videos with magic camp and with hybrid as well uh being that i usually will swap to a channeler's ring when i'm maging to help get accuracy and no di there is no difference here with this combat style uh full arrows their 10 percent accuracy hit is rather grueling when it comes to dealing with echo so i just brought splint ring to allow myself to use salt the wound the main different if you want to use the poison setup i will show both kills later on in the video as examples however if you want to swap this out for a poison setup all you would do is swap the spiritual prayers to a blessed flask or whatever prayer source you have and the arrows in your pernix quiver i have i just have another pernix quiver for uh bic arrows and you would just bring the bic arrows as well because Blood Reaver, you don't have to spam spirituals. Blood Reaver is just kind of a free heal for you. And that's about it, honestly. As far as the other gear is concerned, the blue EOF that I am wearing, that has my SGB, EO, uh, that SGB in it. The blue EOF in the inventory that does not have an ornament kit, that one has Debo. And the orange EOF with the ornament kit has an ECB inside of it. I bring a tier 90 shield just about everywhere at this point. There's no real reason not to bring one. Uh, inventory space on either of these setups is not really a concern. And honestly, I just bring a shield for the reses on phase 4. The two rune pouches have runes for Disrupt and Vengeance. I personally only really use Disrupt Shield, and that's about it on that front. Vuln Bombs are there for obvious reasons, Vulning, Karapak, and the Echoes. The Combat Dummy is actually pretty important because I'll get into this a little bit later um, when I'm doing the example kills. 
but the combat dummy, I was doing a build rotation with Natty Instinct and Incendiary Shot to make P1 much smoother. Honestly, I can't recommend it enough. I used to be really annoyed having to bring a combat dummy everywhere, and then when Wars Retreat came out and we got Adrenaline Crystals, man, that was the best thing ever, and I stopped using them. However, I've started to use them again, and it's rather simple to do, and is honestly worthwhile right now for range and kind of the weird predicaments it's in with uh, being very adrenaline-starved as a combat spot style, specifically when using uh, Bow of the Last Guardian. When you're using Bow, adrenaline is a massive problem, so you're always trying to find ways to get extra adrenaline, and one of them is before you start a boss fight, you can go ahead and Natty Instinct into an incendiary shot, so you're uh, getting a crit buff, where every time you do crit, you get 10% adrenaline for each crit. It's very handy, especially with uh, how everything is set up right now, and I can't recommend it enough. Other than that, just fill your inventory with food, and a bladed dive swap is kind of unnecessary here. I haven't really needed it. It's mostly just there because I'm used to it, so um, if you really need the food space, you could drop BD. It's not necessary, but uh, I personally just bring it anyways. Also, if you're going to be going for the poison setup with Blood Reaver, you will be using Vamp Aura. And obviously, if you're using the damage, the like, kind of full send setup, you're going to be using Reckless. With the worn equipment and inventory sort of out of the way now, I quickly wanted to talk about the, the perks that I have on my gear. So my chest plate is just kind of a standard setup of Impatient 4, Devoted 4, you can get this from uh, Zami. I forget what the, I always forget what this item is, but it's like Zami and it starts with an M. You can get 100 per 4 hours, they're real cheap, you just disassemble them, toss them in with I believe two Ceridoman components, which you can get pretty cheap as well. If you want the specific combo for it, you can just go to uh, PVME and they have all the information on the combos there. I think there's even Discord bots to tell you like the perfect combos for uh, what to do to get the best chance at any perk combo. Anyways, I digress. I also have C4R5, that is just a best in slot perk. I do have Biting 4 Mobile. You can put Mobile anywhere on this gear, it doesn't really matter. Biting 4 Mobile makes it a little bit easier if you want to swap out your fourth perk, because then that can just be whatever secondary perk you're looking for, as well as a different primary perk. So. I went ahead and went with Lucky 6 Genocidal. That was just to get Genocidal on in some type of protection while I'm doing uh, Karapak. Being that he is a high damaging boss and can really mess you up, normally you would just put Enhanced Devoted in here, but Genocidal is too good to pass up, being you can be on Slayer Task here. Uh, note on Dragonkin Slayer Task for those who are wondering. Lucky 6 is just there as just another form of damage reduction without going for something kind of ridiculous such as uh, Invig 4 or something like that, because you're not really getting auto attacks out ever with Bow of the Last Guardian or any range setup. Invig 4 is honestly one of the most pointless per pointless perks for this combat style specifically. With melee, there's like some very odd use cases, but uh, again, I digress. And this perk combo worked out well. Uh, you use the same perk setup whether you are using um, a poison setup or a normal kind of full send damage setup. Other than that, let's go ahead and jump into the example kills. Alrighty, so before we get into this example kill, first off, we're starting with the full arrow, or full send setup, I like to call it, where you're just mashing out damage on a Ripper Demon. Uh, real quick, I'm just going to show off the relics. They're the bog standard, usual relics that I would use anywhere. Uh, Death Ward, COE, Fury of the Small, that's pretty much what I use per, for any combat style in any situation, honestly. Sometimes if I'm really going to crank out a time, I might put in Berserker's Fury, but... Oh, there's a Dren Starved as this combat style is, every little bit counts. But, uh, go ahead and make sure we're all potted up and ready to go. Alright, once you're at the entrance, go ahead and enter. Make sure hard mode is enabled. And I surge once, drop a combat dummy, and I'll TC with a Natty into a Gricko, and just build from here until I'm at 100. Then I'll put an Incendiary Shot down. Do a couple basics. Once I'm 100, I'll Surge, DS, hit two more basics, walk a tile, toss a Vuln Bomb, and TC with a Bow Spec, Gricko, ECB, and go ahead and toss an SGB down, and I usually run under with a Rapid. Here, I'm going to go ahead and Snap. 
Rico, Debo, and then just toss a bleed. I'll do a two basics here and then use tendies into a Gricko. And here I just run under so he kind of stays in place. And we've kind of melted through this phase. I goofed up there because I just realized that I don't have the uh, spirituals bound. Or now they're bound. I'm just going to hang out a little bit because my DS isn't quite back on cooldown. I'll wait for the... Uh, there, I'll wait till that point. And then go ahead and start a DS. You snipe to just hold under, but I'm going to cancel it so I can get a bow spec off. Gricko into an SGB. Double basic here. And so I get a snap hit. Rapid fire. Debo, just because I can. Another Gricko. Not doing the best job of keeping him in place, but I'm just kind of improving here. I'll do two more basics, toss a snap out, and then it should be phase. Ah, a little bit. Just be mindful of the stacks. Instantly go for a time warp DS again. Go ahead and get my bow spec off because I was already at seven. Since I'm already at 3, I'll toss a bleed, and then so I get my SGB with the extra hit, and then run under for another rapid fire. I'll do a basic snap into a D, or a Debo, I should say. <laughs> I'll set a DS, and just kind of basic my way through this. I'll just get an extra ba basic in so I can get a third hit on my snapshot. And just kind of improv this from here. And then here we go for the second slam. I'll go ahead and swap to my other quiver now, just so I don't forget later. Go to this guy and kind of do the usual of bit potting the north and going south. And then I'll attack, or go into middle, attack south. Go ahead and get my bow spec off now so that I can. Cancel that snap just so I can get some hits in. And just kind of use thresholds to kill this guy pretty quickly can do here is MDS Gricko into a uh, into a salt wound and that usually hits pretty well just with splintering arrows I'm surprised at what it can do I went ahead and tossed another uh, Debo on him just to get the health down a bit quicker put a Vaughn Bomb on this guy probably should drink some spirituals I've not been spamming well here I am gonna save my time warp here and just kind of build up some stacks here know why I disrupted there, but now we can just kind of threshold dump if we want. I'm going to go ahead and do a Rico to get an extra hit on the SGB there. I forgot the time warp. You're supposed to press time warp there, and then you get refunded all your adrenaline, but I obviously for, uh, misclicked it. And we'll just finish off the kill here. So he would have been dead by now. And I wouldn't have burned all my food in that case because I would have had second devotion and whatnot. But, you know, mistakes happen. And, you know, that's just kind of... Things are not always going to go 100% to plan. So, um, sorry if I was a bit silent through that one. I'll go ahead and go through what I did uh, just as a recap here. So, phase one, or before the boss start fights, I surge once into the middle here. And that is on wherever you, wherever you spawn from to where you surge. If you step one tile further in, it will start the boss fight. So if you place the dummy there and just attack it, you can set there indefinitely. And then I just go ahead and natty. I Gricko with my Hydrix and my Chroming Swamp just to try and get as much adrenaline as possible. And I just take however many basics it takes to build up. And then after that, once I'm at 100%, I go ahead and swap to my bow and use incendiary shot. And then I just go ahead and build up again. Sometimes I might go for a second Greco. I try to save it and just hope that crit adren is going to carry me, but sometimes I'm not as lucky and that's just how it works. 
The main thing that I do though, and that I, or that I try to do anyways, is when I surge for my DS, I try to make sure to do it on tick two of three of greater cooldown, or of global cooldown, I should say. So it's ability, surge, and then instant DS there. So, oh, I accidentally spawned him. Oops. <laughs> I forgot that he respawns in the instance. That actually surprised me. So what I'm doing there is I'm spawn I am starting DS on the spawn tick, and it makes it line up a little bit nicer um, for getting the two abilities back off on the dummy, just to get some extra adrenaline and to make sure you have enough stacks. So when you move forward a tile and hit target cycle into bow spec you will have enough uh stacks there already so that the bow spec hit goes out and then it gets doubled by you know the passive that you had already built up and from there you go ahead and go i usually go into immediately into a gricko so you're at three stacks already because it'll run through the first four and spawn another and then the five six and seven hit will come through again onto number three and then so that way you can instantly hit um, ECB spec. If you can ECB first before Gricko, ECB does not spawn a hit or anything like that. You should be fine there. And then Gricko SGB, so it gets its hit. And then usually I'll do bleed into rapid and let rapid fire try and build up my adrenaline a little bit more. If I'm getting very unlucky on crits and I, I'm getting none, I will go ahead and sip a pot P1. Because as you saw, the only other place I use it is P4. Um, if you get lucky enough, you can go ahead and use that A-Pot either Phase 2 or 3, depending on what your Adrenaline is looking like. And the main thing I'm just focusing on is building up my stacks enough with basics to get the extra hit. Because in my opinion, I think it's worthwhile to go ahead and toss a lower basic, maybe even sometimes Piercing Shot, to go ahead and get an extra hit of Snap, or an extra Tendrils, or an extra hit on Debo. For me, it balances out in my head to be worthwhile. However, there's probably some absolute wizard when it comes to range and knowing the perfect... There's probably some perfect rotation to where you never have to use these crap abilities. But I like to use it as a filler just to get me to the right number of stacks should I fall off for whatever reason. And other than that, for my death swiftness, I usually do a time warp DS and just uh, try to get off either the bow spec or the ECB or both if I can uh, before the time warp cooks. And then I will just send out all of the thresholds and all of the Grickos that I possibly can, uh, getting in an SGB usually. I usually aim for one SGB per DS at this encounter, and it works out pretty well instead of trying to get the second one. It makes life a little bit easier to just go ahead and toss SGB in the middle of your rotation and just kind of uh, move on from there. Phase three is just a repeat of phase two, except you can go ahead and pretty much instantly time warp your DS because it will be off cooldown from your previous time warp. And then phase four, as far as that is considered or er, concerned, bit pot north, enter mid or west, I should say, and then run to about this area here, kill south, and then once south is dead, uh, kill the middle one, surge over, kill north, and then kill Karapak. I usually plant one time warp DS here, so that way I have DS off cooldown, and I'll usually do an A-pot DS up here, and then use the time warp for all the thresholds and whatnot. Obviously in that kill, I kind of goofed up and forgot to press time warp, you know. Uh, my brain was in a million different places like it usually is or I'm just not paying attention or I'm just bad you know it's any of the possibilities sometimes stuff just happens and it is what it is but you usually can improv either way and get a kill just fine now let's go ahead and look into the poison setup Alrighty, so the main difference between the poison setup and the full send setup that you just witnessed is I'm using a Blood Reaver instead of the Ripper Demon, and that is to help facilitate hits out that potentially can cause poison procs. Um, it's just really nice for doing a kind of full send poison setup, and it's based on healing methods used. So Vamp Aura and Soul Split both independently will power the Blood Reaver and just send out loads of hit spam. 
and it's kind of funny to watch it once it really gets into full tilt. But uh, we have a lot more space for food because we're using a blessed flask instead of spiritual prayers or spiritual flasks. So we can go ahead and drop down to Guthix Rest since we are on Vamp Aura or Majorat or any of those, you know, kind of non-accuracy prayer or auras, I should say is uh, I use Guthix Rest to help with accuracy on phase four, uh, the echoes that spawn. But other than that, go ahead and grab Adrenaline and let's get into the skill. So just like the other kill, I go ahead and surge once and then drop the dummy. Head and Natty Instinct, go for a Greco. Didn't get any Hydrox procs, but you know, it's kind of the way it goes and just build up per usual. 100%, go ahead and toss an incendiary. Toss another one, I'm gonna go for another Hydrix Gricko. And then Surge, use my DS on tick. One basic toss. The Volnbob moving up tick forward, or a tile forward, and then Gricko into the SGB. I ECB'd a little bit late there, but I'm just gonna instantly go into a uh, rapid fire under. Snap into a Debo. Try and get some adrenaline back with the Gricko. Didn't happen, so I'll just go ahead and use a couple basics here. I'll go ahead and use a third basic, even though it's a crap one, just to get a double tendies. Do you think it's kind of worthwhile to do that? And I'm soul splitting as much as possible. I probably honestly could just do this. That would make a bit more sense. For some reason, phase one, I still like to hold them in place, even though I'm kind of doing a terrible job of that. But as you can see, that's phase one done. That's just kind of improv to rotation. I'm gonna hold off a little bit here on the time warp. Make sure he's there, because I was waiting for my DS. Now I can go ahead and time warp. And since I'm on seven, I'm just gonna go ahead and bow spec. Under. Get another bleed off. ECB, go ahead and Gricko, so I'm on three. Drop an SGB. Endies is not off cooldown, so I'll just go into a rapid fire. Lost a couple bleeds on, because bleed hits do count for poison procs. And just kind of improv from here. Range is very improv as a combat style, it's kind of the beauty of it. Here we can just go instantly into a time warp, I'm going to hit one more basic, we're on 7, so I'm just going to go for a bow spec. Rico into an SGB. Double basic, ECB and run under, and go ahead and hit a rapid fire. I will say the enjoyable thing about this method is the kind of creative liberty you can take with your rotations. Just kind of work with it and figure out what works for you. Something I personally enjoy. But as you see, he's almost already down and we're just getting into jumps here. Like this poison setup, once it gets full tilt, it can really pump out damage. And I'm being a little bit lazy here with my damage, but you know, it is what it is. Now phase four is coming up. I'm going to swap over to splintering, go north, hit my vit pot, and then just run to the middle, uh, run to south while going into the middle one. And then we're just going to do a, a time warp DS here. Here I'm going to snap so I'm on three and then go ahead and hit salt the wound. It double hit massively. We always love seeing that. For that hit, cancel a bit early so I can just do another ability here. Honestly, I'm just probably going to double bleed, wait for snap or keep basicing. Here and I can just instantly DS. the three stacks, bow smack, into a devotion and a rapid fire to hopefully kill this guy and I'll just limitless the snap because I'm going to get it back anyways. And then it's no real point swapping back to big arrows because he wipes the stacks anyways. Like I've tested this, I don't know why he does this, but right going into phase four he wipes the stacks. 
then when your HP's getting low, can just devotion again. Bow spec ran out, so we'll go ahead and one of these. Go ahead and attendees for the crowd. And rapid fire to finish him off. It is advised to not miss your prey flex or else you will get hit a bit of damage. And there you go, kill is done. As you can see, it's a low four. I have had much better kills with this setup, uh, in more in the 350 range. But anywhere from that 350 to 410 range is about what I've been seeing with both setups. However, I think with a bit of fine tuning, the full arrow setup can go a bit faster. I could see that one getting in 340s, 330s with a competent ranger and then some god tier person. Probably, you know, someone out there probably has a sub 3 with a range and we just don't know it. You know, there's probably some ridiculous, you know, that one guy out there probably has a ridiculous time. But uh, for me, I'm seeing about similar results. I think I could optimize the full arrow further. Uh, I had a couple P1s that I believe were the first slam skip, like just some nutty, it, do, it depends on S, uh, SGB, RNG, you know, whether you get five arrows or not, but uh, honestly, both are a fun setup, both are enjoyable, they get pretty good guilt, kill times, and I know a lot of people will be wondering, you know, why is why would anyone do this if it's slower, melee camp is faster, hybrids faster, well... In my opinion, the melee setup here is pretty annoying, and it, after a couple hours of doing a melee camp here, my brain would be mush just from all of the stress involved with P4 investments. Like, that's a, that's a big bowl of nope from me. Uh, it looks fun to do for like an hour, and it just kind of loses. So if you're here for a, the long haul... Uh, you have to think about it like this. You might do two, three hours, uh, or maybe it's only an hour or two in like a hybrid setup, and then you're kind of done, and that's so many kills per day. But if you're able to have other methods to keep you at the boss longer each day, overall, you know, kills per week is going to go up because it's not so much a limit on the game itself or kills per hour, it's a limit on you and what your brain is willing to handle. So having ways to trick your brain into doing the same thing over and over again, but making it think it's do something else, I think that's very beneficial to have when doing something such as a grind a care pack for you know, a big ticket item and whatnot. Ladies, gentlemen, and I did not forget about you smithing gauntlets. Thank you very much for watching the video. If this video was helpful to you, consider subscribing. It helps out the channel more than you know, and feel free to leave a like as well. If you didn't like the video, feel free to dislike it. And anyways, I'm Car Guy. Have a wonderful morning, evening, afternoon, nighttime, whatever it is, wherever you are, and I will see you next time for the next guide or video. Peace.